Good morning and thank you, Chair. Let me, of course, acknowledge you, Chair, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Bruno Perea, and our Executive Secretary, Varsena. Permit me to especially acknowledge Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, Ms. Mohammed, and it is certainly a distinct honor to be on this panel with you. As well, my colleague ministers, delegates, friends, I take my opportunity this morning to speak about a topic which perhaps we have not covered in our sessions. And as we consider the inefficiency of inequality, I ask us to turn our minds to the inefficiency of insecurity. As a region, our human development, social development, economic and sustainable development are all at risk if we fail to consider the enormous development cost of insecurity. For my country, Jamaica, the threat posed by insecurity and the threat to our region by criminal activities, including transnational crimes, trafficking in persons, and illicit arms transfer is enormous. As we seek as a region to advance sustainable development goals, we must compel ourselves to acknowledge and consider the direct and indirect impact of crime and violence and insecurity on our current and future planning. And this includes the security of our people, our resources, and our spaces, both landmass and marine. You see, I, before being in the portfolio of foreign affairs and having the opportunity to sit with these distinguished ladies and gentlemen, served in the Ministry of National Security. And so I understand the inextricable link between treating with crime if we are to achieve our sustainable development goals. They are inversely proportional. Where there is crime, it will threaten the introduction and success of our goals. And where we are successful in reducing and managing crime and violence, we will have a greater opportunity to achieve our sustainable development goals. I want us to see it as a predator, a predator that is going through a forest and seeking to attack all that is good. It's spreading fear and capitalizing on our vulnerabilities. And it forces us to allocate funds to protect our people, funds which could otherwise be used, for instance, for the sub-region, the Caribbean, to protect our beaches, to build the structures and environmental framework needed to promote the climate resilience that we have spoken about throughout our session. So it is critical for us to see the aspects of insecurity and the developmental cost as it impacts our GDP, our gross domestic product as a region in Jamaica. For us, crime costs almost 4% of our GDP. That is an enormous amount which we could spend on promoting and advancing all of the goals we have discussed. But I want us to understand as a region that it is not a Jamaica problem. It is not a sub-region problem. It is a problem that impacts all of us. Because the sophisticated nature of the criminal network 
no longer finds itself in any one space, isolated to any one territory. It is an interweaving network which goes from Bolivia to Jamaica to Venezuela to Antigua to Cuba. And so, it is not my problem, it is our problem. There's also the aspect of the criminal effect of migration. For Jamaica, it is increasingly, increasingly troubling that a significant percentage of our highly trained and skilled professionals who have gone through our system are leaving our country, never to return, because of fear, fear of the predator that seeks to take their opportunities from them, fear of the predator that is crime. I acknowledge the remarks of my colleague Minister Maria Espinosa who referred to the issues relating to our women and our children. And I take that opportunity also to remind us that as with transnational crime relating to the movement of drugs and guns, there is a more important aspect relating to the unlawful and illegal movement of our people. Not due to migration as I spoke about, but due to trafficking in persons. It is something which undermines everything that we speak about today. It is something which we must understand as critical because the recruiting, transporting, transferring, harboring, or receiving of persons in this unlawful way is having an impact across our region beyond our understanding because it is difficult to track it's difficult for us to record accurately but what we do know is that there is much we can do about it each territory must take upon itself the responsibility of putting in place the legislative framework to tackle trafficking in persons and in Jamaica we have instituted an office of the National Rapporteur on Trafficking in Persons with a commitment to strengthening measures to combat and eliminate all forms of human trafficking. We are party to the Global Heart Campaign Against Human Trafficking uh, where the campaign is an international awareness initiative by the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime to fight human trafficking and its impact on our societies. We also have become signatories to and ratified the UN protocol to prevent, suppress, and punish trafficking in persons, especially women and children. And I state that the UN Convention Against Transnational Organized Crime declares that the parties shall endeavor to undertake measures such as those including bilateral or multilateral cooperation to alleviate the factors that make persons, especially our women and our children, vulnerable to trafficking such as poverty, underdevelopment and lack of opportunity. I know that we all understand the inextricable connection between those aspects of which I've spoken about and all that we seek to achieve. So, I take the opportunity again to reaffirm the commitment of my government to working, participating, learning from, supporting and assisting all members of ECLAC as we seek to achieve our holistic development, our regional integration, and aspects of sustainable development.
without ever forgetting that it must be built on a framework that builds confidence and trust in our people. So that when we do as our executive secretary has said, in leaving none behind, we can do so knowing that we are giving our developmental potential a fair chance. As a CARICOM region, we have discussed and are moving towards strengthening our ability to combat the illicit trade, as I said, in guns and ammunition. We are very clear in aspects evaluating our border security. In Jamaica, in the last year, we have made very bold statement despite the fiscal constraints which we have because of our economic arrangements we have allocated the largest amount to our national security endeavors ever before in our history that is because we understand that our nation's security is pivotal to our nation's growth and development as it is pivotal to our growth and sustainable development as a region. I close by reminding us also of the need to utilize technology and innovation not just as a means of putting in place the resources but to determine the intelligence and information not just to drive down crime, but for us to become better planners across our region. And that we could consider planning not just for our territories, but as a region. So the measures that we implement as individual territories must be measures that are synergetic, connected, to the implementation of our goals which we have stated here at ECLAC. As we examine the challenges facing, facing our region and as we seek to determine paths to development, I want to very clearly call on us all to reaffirm our commitment and our resolve to sufficiently address all aspects of the very ambitious development structure that we have agreed to construct. This means that we must never forget the development cost of insecurity. Thank you.